Shalom, good evening. Watched a video recently on this topic, black nobility and their place in, in history, uh, done by Corey Mayo. Uh, I don't want to watch a lot of videos. I, I watch basically Lex Will. Um, Corey Mayo, you have absolutely no idea what you're talking about. It was so obvious that you were just biting off other people's videos. And, you know, it just really wants me to, uh, makes me want to, uh, thanks and, and give credit where credit's due to Lex Will because Lex Will, you know what you're talking about. And uh, just about everything you teach in your videos, I, I've found to be true. Here's William Tyndale. I went over him yesterday in the other video. Um... But I didn't go in to read about him, and it, it turns out he's a very, very important man. Um, he has what this, his Wikipedia page here is got to be six to seven pages long with 50 citations, uh, 75 or something resources, sources, you know. Look at all this. You see this? Very important man. Let me show you one other thing very quick before we get into just who this gentleman was. He was of British descent, obviously, born in Britain, died in um, Germany, I believe. Anyhow, look at this uh, statue. You can see the bridge of the original nose and where the original nose was cut off and where two dinkleberry looking things were put under it. Um, I don't know what they were thinking. That looks totally ridiculous. Um, never seen that, you know? Usually they just chop it off, but damn, that is fucking stupid. All right. Um, William Tyndale. Born 1494, died 1536, was an English scholar who became a leading figure in the Protestant Reformation in the years leading up to his execution. He is well known as a translator of the Bible into English, influenced by the works of Erasmus and Martin Luther. Now they talk about that he's influenced here, but as we're going to find out, he's the influencer. A number of partial English translations have been made from the 7th century onwards, but the religious ferment, ferment caused by Wyclef's Bible in the late 14th century led to the death penalty for anyone found in unlicensed possession of scripture in English. That's crazy. Though translations were available in all other major European languages. Um, okay. Strange. Anyway, Tyndale worked during a Renaissance scholarship which saw the publication of Ruchlin's Hebrew Grammar in 1506. Greek was available to the European scholarly community for the first time in centuries as it welcomed Greek-speaking intellectuals and texts following the fall of Constantinople in 15, 1453. I'm going to skip through this because it's real long, but... Um, going to get the, the important parts here. So, skipping down to the next paragraph, top of the next paragraph. Tyndale's translation was the first English Bible to draw directly from Hebrew and Greek text. The first English translation to take advantage of the printing press. The first of the new English Bibles of the Reformation. And the first English translation to use that name as the Most High's name is preferred by English Protestant reformers. It was taken to be a direct challenge to the hegemony of both the Catholic Church and the laws of England, maintaining the Church's position. I'm going to skip through here. Uh, Henry's unknown. Alright, so he had to flee England. Um, it's like four, four sentences down in the next. Fleeing England, Tyndale sought refuge in Flemish territory of the Catholic Emperor James, Charles V. In 1535, Tyndale was arrested and jailed in the castle of Villevoorde. 
outside Brussels for over a year. In 1536, he was convicted of heresy and executed by strangulation, after which his body was burnt at the stake. His dying wish was that the King of England's eyes would be open. This seemed to be to find its fulfillment just one year later with Henry's authorization of the Matthew Bible, which was largely Tyndale's own work, with missing sections translated by these jokers. Tyndale's translation of the Bible was plagiarized for subsequent English translations, including the Great Bible, the Bishop's Bible, authorized by the Church of England. In 1611, the 47 scholars who produced the King James Bible drew significantly from Tyndale's original work and other translations that descended from his. One estimate suggests that a New Testament in the King James Version is 83% Tyndale's words and the Old Testament 76%. Hence the work of Tyndale continued to play a key role in spreading the Reformation ideas across the English-speaking world and eventually across the British Empire. Yeah, the English-speaking world, world would be the British Empire, would it not? Uh, Tyndale was placed 26 in the BBC's poll of the top greatest Britons. Top greatest Britons. I, I've seen this 100 greatest Britons, 100 greatest black Britons. However, look at that. They didn't even uh, belittle his accomplishment. They just said he's 100 greatest Britons, period. All right. Um, you know, he studied at Oxford. I'm going to skip down here a little. Okay, eventually Tyndale was betrayed by Henry Phillips to the imperial authorities, seized in Antwerp in 1535 and held in Castile. Some suspect that Phillips was hired by Bishop Stofskowski to gain... Tyndale's confidence and then betray him. He was tried on a charge of heresy and was condemned to be burned to death, despite Thomas Cromwell's intercession on his behalf. Tyndale was strangled to death. Okay, we're going to skip through this too. Uh, but it, uh, Within four years, next paragraph, four English translations of the Bible were published in English at the king's behest, including Henry's official great Bible. All were based on Tyndale's work again. Um, all right, so uh, printed works, you know, he was an epic author. He wrote a lot of stuff, other, other than the Bible, of course, <laughs> other than his translation of the Bible. Um, here's a list of it. Um, this is interesting. Impact on the English language. In translating the Bible, Tyndale introduced new words into the English language. Many were subsequently used in the King James Bible, such as Passover and scapegoat. Coinage of the word atonement is also sometimes ascribed to Tyndale. However, the word was probably in use by at least 1513 before Tyndale's translation. Similarly, sometimes Tyndale is said to have coined the term mercy seat. While it is true that Tyndale introduced the word into English, mercy seat is more accurately a translation of Luther's German whatever. All right, so then here's some of the phrases that he coined. My brother's keeper, knocking it shall be open. A moment in time, fashion not yourself to the world. Seek and you shall find, ask and it shall be given to you, judge not that you be judged. The word of the Ishi which liveth and lasteth forever. Let there be light, the powers that be, the salt of the earth, along unto themselves. It came to pass. Haya. The signs of the times, filthy lucre. Spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Live, move, and have our being. That sounds like all New Testament stuff. And uh, you know, this made a this made a controversy. 
with the church. I guess it was the church that was fighting him down. You know, uh, I was thinking about this that, um, you know, we we already know most of the stuff we're taught is bullshit, right? So we have this idea of what they told us about the Protestant Reformation. However, it seems more to me like this man was possibly just a Hebrew. I mean, not possibly a Hebrew that was just fighting against the Catholic Church and trying to keep um, Hayah's law in, uh, in effect. Anyhow, just a theory. Um, okay, here's impact on English Bibles. The translation... Translations of the Revised Standard Version in the 1940s noted that Tyndale's translation, including the 1535 Matthew Bible, inspired the translations that followed. Yeah, we already talked about this. The Great Bible, right? The Geneva Bible, 1560. The Bishop's Bible, Duo Rames Bible, and King James Bible. And it says... Uh, the RSV translators noted it, the KJV, kept felicitous phrases and apt expressions from what's whatever source, which had stood the test of public usage. It owed most especially in the New Testament to Tyndale. Five fifteen equal weights and measures, um, and um, you know I realized that um, some people might look at this and 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 ask why I don't do a video about my own people, um, and you know I would say to you very simply that. Uh, this is about my people. Every time I put an image up of uh, a melanated person that was lied on and, and their history stolen away from, what I see is the lies of my people. So to me, this video is all about the lies of my people, okay? So that being said, uh, have a great night. Thanks for watching. Hiya.